Good morning, children. And welcome to all of you once again to the second of our grade seven classes on the exciting new venture called robotics and coding. Again, I just want to introduce myself if there's anybody uh, that may be joined today for the first time, but wasn't here yesterday. I am your facilitator in this uh, session, and my name is uh, Mr. A.F. Gabriel. And this uh, special holiday program is brought to you uh, in partnership with the Department of Basic Education and Africa Teen, uh, Africa Teen Geek. So we do hope as we progress that we uh, enjoy the lessons together and that it becomes beneficial for you as you begin uh, to understand this idea of robotics and coding. Now, uh, let's quickly begin by uh, just doing a few recaps, uh, just a quick recap of what we covered yesterday, and, and then we can move on with what we are doing today, especially once again, if there are people that have joined us for the first time today, but have not been uh, with us previously. Okay, now, um, yesterday I introduced you to the concept of robotics and coding. And we talked about how we can write code to give instructions to an application, which would be something that you would find as a program that runs on a phone or a tablet or a computer. But then robotics is more looking at giving instructions to an electronic device. And the example we used yesterday was a remote control car. And then I taught, and then I taught you, um, how we give these instructions and what those instructions are called. We used a word that most ordinary per people don't know because it's a word that exists in the computer programming field. And so now I want to check, I want to test and see if anyone who was with us yesterday can remember the, um, the word that I taught you. Uh, and I'm gonna just, before I ask you, um, this word, is the word that describes for us a series of instructions that we use to give um, an electronic device, this set of instructions. What is the one word that we used yesterday to call this instruction? Somebody would like to answer the question? Somebody can raise their hand and I, I will unmute you so you can answer. Nobody. Trevor, Trevor, you want to answer? Yes, sir. Okay, Trevor, go for it. The word is algorithm. Hey, well done, well done, Trevor. Well done, thank you so much. Yeah. You, are, you, are, you are correct. The word we used yesterday is the word called algorithm. And then to remind you, an algorithm is a step-by-step -step series of instructions. And when we follow these instructions, we, we achieve a desired uh, or, or a, a result. So um, what we're gonna do now is we are... Uh, we are going to start writing some algorithms of our own. Okay. And so we're going to jump straight into a special program. Remember yesterday I told you also that if you want to be, be able to write up your own instructions to an electronic device, you have to learn a language. Now, let's quickly just briefly talk about that. A language is used for communication. Right? So all of you have a language that you use to talk to people. Uh, for example, I'm teaching you today, but we are communicating in English. There are lots of other languages, in, especially in South Africa. There's Afrikaans and Isi Zulu and Kosa. So there are lots of languages that we use to communicate. And not everybody knows every language. For example, if you talk to me in uh, Kosa, I won't understand what you are saying. So, but I can go after that and learn the language. And if I learn the language, 
then I will be able to, um, I will be able to uh, communicate with you. Now, in the same way, if you want to be able to give instructions to an electronic device, this device does not speak English. For example, if you had a car in front of you, you can't say to the car with your, with your voice, hey car, move forward. It's not gonna move. Hey car, turn right. No, the car is just going to sit there and do nothing because it does not understand English. So we want to find a way in which we can communicate with this car or with this, well, a robotic device, right? And we're going to have to choose a language. Now, these devices can communicate or can be, well, they can work with lots of different um, languages that we could learn to use to control them. And so we're going to start with something that's very simple for our level. And we, we're going to start with a set of instructions um, in, a, in, a, in a language called the Miss Zora platform. When you go to high school, you will be able to change all of what you learn in this platform to another programming language known as Python. I saw also yesterday, some people said that they were familiar. They had seen Python and I, if I'm not mistaken, there are some people in this room that were also able to uh, program a little bit in Python. So well done to you if you have such a lucky head start. Okay, so what I'm gonna to do to you now, to, uh, for, with you today, is I'm gonna introduce you to the Ms. Zora platform. And what I need you to do is you can minimize your Zoom screen so that uh, we can, uh, so that you can share my screen and you can follow what we do on my screen so that you can also uh, learn to do it. Well, what I forgot to mention to all of you yesterday was um, it would be a very good idea if you had a notebook. Um, I don't think it's, it might be too late for you to go online now. Um, and I want to uh, just remind you going forward, it might be a, a good idea for you to have a pencil and some paper or a little notebook that you can use to make notes um, as, we, uh, as the lessons unfold each day as we go along. The reason for that is because um, we, we, we're teaching you by sharing our screen. So for the most part, you'll be following what I'm doing. And it's good, you know, it's not possible entirely for you to be able to uh, use your computer because unless you, of course, you're lucky enough to have two computers and you can use one to test stuff and one to share my screen. But I think most people won't have that. So you won't have access to your computer until this teaching lesson is done. And then you can go and experiment with all that you've learned. Also, you have the opportunity to download the video which is gonna be uploaded to YouTube. And then you can also play back this lesson and then you can do things uh, on your own. So perhaps notes will be helpful because you can um, then refer to your notes uh, when you are after this class is done and maybe you want to experiment a little bit. Okay, so having said that, I think we'll all be a little bit better prepared tomorrow. Let us all now um, get introduced to the platform that we're going to be using. It's called MS Sora or known uh, fondly as Ms. Sora. What we're going to do is I'm going to display, I'm going to minimize this screen here. And I'm going to minimize this PowerPoint presentation. Uh, let me just close it up. Okay, now what you need to do is you need to open your browser. And uh, obviously you can't do it on your computer now because you're sharing with me. So that is why I said make notes. And in your browser window, you're simply gonna type this. So in your notes, just make a note of this. It is called M S. And you can see because I, I have used it before on my computer, it will pick up. Let me just get the mouse out of the way. Right, so you all can see now, um, where are we going to go? This is mszora.co.za. This is where we're going to uh, learn this language in order to be able to communicate with some of our devices. Now, I want to say also, this is a zero rated platform, which means once you log on to it, it won't cost you any data. You won't be using none of your data that you have will be used. So you don't have to worry about all your data disappearing during the, the time that we are logged on to this site because we are uh, using the internet. 
right? So your data is safe. This is a zero rated site. So you type mszora.co.za, make a note of that, press enter in your browser, and it should take us to the site. Let me just minimize that. Okay. Right. So now um, this is the MS Sora platform. Um, you can see a, <clears throat> a little logo out on the left hand side of the screen, providing an immersive and interactive learning experience for every child in South Africa. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to uh, sign up. Okay. Now, there, you'll see there are two things on the screen one says log in, the other one says sign up. If you have not used the MS Order platform before, you will have to sign up first before you can log in. Now, I already have an account because I use MS Sora, so I can go to login and I'm just going to do it so I can show you what happens. And this is the, this is the login page where you, where you can sign in. But since you have not um, used this before, and maybe some of you have, uh, so just bear with me if you've already done so, I've got to teach the other students in the room how to, how to sign up. So we're going to click the sign up. And um, this screen will open up. Clearly, it shows you the Miss Zora platform. And it says new account because we haven't had an account before. And we choose a, a username for yourself. OK, now uh, <clears throat> this is my username, Fanly Lad. You will type your username there. And uh, you, can, you can choose anything you like for yourself. Remember also there, there, there might be lots of users starting to log in and you might inadvertently choose a username that somebody else has already chosen, right? If that happens, the system will tell you and you must just uh, try to pick a, a different name. Um, if you like the name that you want, you can perhaps do things like, uh, okay, let's say it tells me family lad is already taken by some somebody else i can maybe like add a number to to it um for example maybe i can put 2012 it's my son's uh, year of birth and i know i won't forget it so the likelihood that somebody picking friendly led with that combination of of numbers is not likely if if that is so then you know just pick another combination of of numbers and i think you should be quite fine with whatever it is so don't take too long trying to find a username for yourself um but <clears throat> Once you've got that, you will go to the next one. Now, you will also have to pick a password for yourself. And again, with passwords, especially with my experience with children, we tend to forget them. Um, this is in a place where, you know, you're going to be transacting with money and so on. So perhaps the password doesn't need to be so secure. So if you want to write it down in your notebook that you are using to take notes and so on, um, you know, you're most welcome. I think it's not a bad idea if you're going to forget. But again, we must choose passwords that, that, that have some meaning to us so that we can remember. However, there is some restrictions, some things that have to be part of your password. So let's read that. The password must have at least eight characters. Characters means that the, the number of um, letters or words or numbers or things that you choose to be in it, it can't be less. So for example, if your dog's name is Toto uh, and Toto is T-O-T-O, -T -O, that's only four characters which is uh, not enough to be secure. And this account Zora will not allow you to save that as a password. So you'll have to, you'll have to add four more characters. So it doesn't have to be exactly eight. You can go with more than eight, but um, you, know, you also don't want it to be so long that it takes you long to type and a very long password, you're most likely to forget it also. Right now the password must also have uh, at least one lowercase letter and at least one uppercase. Now let's, uh, those are very interesting uh, words to 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 um, look into. Uppercase and lowercase. What on earth is that talking about? Again, for those of you who are familiar with computer language, it's it's terminology that lives or belongs in the computer world. Um, the ordinary person who, who who wants to say lowercase and uppercase will probably be more familiar with these two things: uh, capital letters and small letters. Okay, so in computer speak, if we want to say you must use small letters, we would actually say lowercase. And if we want to use capital letters, we would say uppercase. So because you're in the computer world now, you must get used to those two terms, lowercase for small letters, uppercase for capital letters or uh, big letters. Now, 
it says you must have at least one lowercase, one small uh, uh, letter, and one uppercase letter, one capital letter, right? And, and you must have at least of one. So your the whole password can't be all in lowercase or all in small letters, right? And you can't have your whole password in capital letters. You must have at least one of each. How many? You can have more than one, but as long as there's both. Then you must have at least one non-alphanumeric. Now, non-alphanumeric, the word alphanumeric is a combination of alpha coming from the word alphabet and numeric coming from the word numbers. So when we say alphanumeric, we mean letters and numbers. Okay, so you must have at least one non-alphanumeric. So at least one character in your password must uh, be something other than an alphabet or a number. Okay, now they give you some examples. And if you look on your keyboard, most of the combinations that we choose are on the keys that share with the numbers. So not, not on the number pad on the right-hand side of your keyboard, but on the top of your keyboard where the numbers are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then zero. You'll find at the number one, there's the non-alphanumeric uh, character, which is called the exclamation. Then sharing number two is the at symbol. Sharing number three is the hash symbol, the dollar percentage, so on and so on and so on. Remember, you have to press the shift button to access that character. So you'll have to press shift and that number and it will give you the special character. Okay, so um, I had to spend a little bit of time there, but I think I hope everybody has an understanding now of how you are going to um, uh, choose a password for yourself, right? So. Uh, select your password. When you type in your password, it puts these um, black dots in there so that you obviously, people watching you can't see your password. So uh, you choose a password and uh, type that in there. Okay, now, very important. What they need is your email address. And you have to put an email address into this part of the registration. You cannot put anything fake there or you can't make up a non-existent email address because this email address is used to verify you. In other words, uh, once, you, once you submit this form, um, they will send a message to this email address that you put there and you'll have to go to that email and open that email that they sent you in order to confirm your registration. So obviously, if you put an email address that you don't have access to, or that you yourself can't open, you will not be you will you will not be able to register, and you will not be able to log in, and you will not be able to use MS Aura very sadly. So please make sure if you have your own email address, by all means use it. If you need to, you know, talk to your parents about what you're needing to do here, some of you might even have your parents sharing in the lesson with us. I'm sure they'll be able to help you with the login procedure so that you can correctly verify yourself through your email and get access to MS Aura. If failing both of those, you're going to have to create a free email address in, in um, you know, Google will, will give you an opportunity to uh, create an email account. Just go to the Google homepage and uh, create an, an email account for yourself if you, if you don't have one. However, I'm sure, I'm sure all of you do. Um, I, I would be quite surprised if there's anybody at grade seven level who have, has no access to email. So you will type your email address in there, right? And uh, you have to type your email address in a second time. Again, they have to make sure that your email address is correct. In case you didn't type it in correctly the first time, the confirmation email will go to an a, a mistaken email address, right? Okay, then I think the rest is self-explanatory. You put your first name, you put your surname, um, and then your city or town that you are living in. And of course, the country, which you can select. It's an alphabetical list if you type. But I'm going to there. Uh, I think everybody in this group will be grade seven. You can see that it's uh, showing grade R and you can select your grade, grade seven. And once all the information is through, it was going, you click on create my new account and it will create your account. 
there are required fields in this form marked. All these exclamations you can't um, you can't skip out of them. And so I think it's not too worried if you don't put your town. If you see I I am from Durban, and and if you and if you don't put your country, okay. So once you click in new account, it will create your account for you. I'm not going to click on create because I've already created an account. Okay, now, uh, before I take it any step further, I'm going to allow an opportunity for you to ask me anything about that process if you are you know, not sure about anything in the sign up. Um, Any, any, anybody want to? Is everybody okay? Okay, um, there's a question here from Ronel. Must you log in as soon as you're done signing up? Uh, no, not right now. Um, thank you for that question. Um, what you want to do is you're going to log in um, when, when you're done with the class because um, unless you're quite smart and you can switch between screens and, and my shared screen and the MS Zora screen, I'm not going to make everybody do that. I'm a bit scared that people will get confused switching between screens. But yes, the, you can do the login and the sign up on your own time. When, or when this class is over, you can, you can log in. It might take a few minutes, especially with passwords. We don't have time to wait for everybody. And thereafter, uh, yeah, when, you, when you're on your own, you can play this video and, and, and go through all that you learned today. Alternatively, you can you know, use your notes if you're not going to play the video. Okay, yes, well, look, Coburn says he's using Zoom on his phone and MSO on the PC and you, know, you pretty much, you know, you kind of cool, you're lucky, you can follow um, everything that, that I'm doing and you can do it with me. And I did say that at the beginning, if you have two devices and you're fortunate enough to do that, you can run the Zoom lesson on one device and uh, you're gonna be quite at an advantage uh, using the other device. Okay, so uh, that brings us to the, um, how to sign up for MS Zora. Okay, when I'm done and it's um, and we'll be done by about two o'clock, you uh, can go and try and log in. And if anybody had any problems, when we log in tomorrow, we'll see if we can um, help you further with any 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 problems that you might have with sign up. Okay, now I'm going to proceed with the login. And you click on now that we have an account, we click on login. Right now, how do you log into Mazora? Firstly, you will type that username that you um, chose. So again, remember not to forget your username. I do advise you to write it down somewhere when uh, in your little notebook that you are using for these classes. And of course, you will type your password. Um, I have used uh, Chrome my browser to automatically save my username and my password in the MS Zora site so that I don't have to keep typing it in. I'm using it almost every day now for these classes. So um, I'm, 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 I'm more or less doing that. Um, if you don't want anybody to get into your uh, MS Zora page, maybe you might not want to do that. But um, I don't know. I don't think there's anything really that they could harm or do. It's just going to take them to take you, a person to this online page where they're going to write coding, which, which they would be pretty much lost at if they have never done anything like this before. So sign in. Either if you want to be very safe, you're going to type your username, you type your password, and, and, um, and, then, and, then, and, then, you, and then you sign in. And then you click, click the login button out here, and I'm going to click that now. And it should take me to my dashboard. Okay, so this is the dashboard. Uh, there's lots of things you can put on the dashboard, but more about that later. The only thing that you'll see, of course, is the Masora logo, and um, the, it's called programming using blocks. 
I will explain what that means once we open it and get into it. And when you want to go into your programming page or your coding page, you simply click on the word blocks, which I have done now. And um, my poor PC is a bit slow while it's opening the MSRA site. And <coughs> excuse me, this is what you would see when you open the, the page. So there's a lot going on here. If you have not seen um, a, a programming language before, and I'm gonna go through everything with you, so don't worry. Step by step, I'll take you through everything if it looks a bit scary. Again, for those of you who've said you've done some of this before um, and you are fortunate in your school, you'll find this very, very familiar. But I'm expecting that there's a large number of people who might not have seen this kind of thing before. And you, um, I'm gonna go through everything very, very carefully, step by step. And then of course, when you download the video, um, you can play it again. Um, there is going to be a lot that we'll cover in the next half hour. So let's hope that we all um, uh, follow. All right, now, this screen that you are seeing is the platform called Missora Block-Based Programming or Block-Based Coding, right? Um, on the center screen, which is the blank space out here, you will see this is what we call the programming screen. Okay, this is where we will write our programs, which are called scripts. So we can call it the script area. And this is where our blocks will appear. And to put it um, more succinctly, this is where we will be creating our, we'll be writing up our instructions here. Let me use that word I taught you yesterday. This is where our algorithm is going to go. We're gonna put all our instructions in this blank space. So you can see there's nothing here because there are no instructions. Okay, now, who is going to receive our instructions? Well, if you look on the right-hand side of the screen on this little uh, square there, you will find that there's a very interesting looking character having staring at us out at the bottom of the screen. Now I'm going to drag him up to the top so we can all see him. And uh, this is our Miss Zora robot. Hello, how are you? And here he is sitting on the screen. So. You can think of it like this. This is the electronic device that is going to be receiving the instructions in this window that we are going to um, create our instructions. So here's your connection. Can you see? You can think of it as if there is a radio control between this window and this little guy here. And so when you give him instructions, he will follow them and do whatever you want him to do. Hmm, very interesting, isn't it? So I know you're all very excited now. You all want to jump in to start writing algorithms and giving the guy instructions and making him do things. So uh, please be patient. I, I would have been excited as you the first time, uh, but there's a lot to have to learn about what we're seeing before we can start writing up algorithm and, and giving instructions. We, we can't just do that. We have to understand what we are seeing. I only explained two parts of the screen. Okay, so I've been calling him a robot, but in this particular Missouri env environment, he is known as a sprite. That's what he is called. And if you look at the bottom here, you'll see um, at the moment he's called Sprite One, right? So this is um, our guy that we're gonna be giving instructions to. I'm, I'm not gonna call him a robot from this point onwards. I'm going to call him a sprite. And you can, you can put more sprites on your screen. You can have one, two, three, four sprites, uh, as many as you want, and you will have different screens in which you can have different instructions for each of the sprites. Obviously, that's a bit complex. We, we, we certainly are not going to be able to program multiple sprites so quickly, but we'll see how we go along. Maybe by the end of the session, we might get to a place where we can program more than one sprite. But for now, one at a time. I'm saying this and I'm giving information because in my experience, Children always investigate. I know that when um, when this lesson is done, you're going to go and fiddle and click and do all do all sorts of things and see what happens. You know what? I believe that's the best way to learn. Uh, by all means, when this class is done, click here, click there, fiddle and do things. Remember, you're on an online platform. If everything goes wrong, just um, go to your um, uh, your Earl window um, and and just go back.
the more experimenting and the fiddling you do, uh, the better you are. And your sprite, which we are using to, to give instructions to. And this area that the sprite is on is known as the stage. Okay, now watch what we can do with the stage. If you want to look at the stage only to see the result of all you disappears all the little blocks that were on this side of the screen are all gone our coding window our script area is gone and now we can see a magnified version of the sprite hello missora and let's close that and here we are back to how we, how we are so uh, first thing you might want to make notice how to flip between the stage and the rest of your screen control Okay, <clears throat> now you might be wondering, hmm, what are these other little goodies here? Now, watch what happens. When you click on this one, you'll find that th that sets the screen in its normal mode. Normal mode is this kind of size for, your, for the blocks, this kind of size for the script area, this kind of size for the stage. Now, let's suppose you want, you're focusing on your, on your script area, and you want to see more of the script area, but you don't want the stage to disappear altogether. And then you will click on this button and watch what happens. The stage gets smaller, the sprite controls and all that gets smaller, and your script window gets bigger. Now you can see all your programming code, right? And at any point you can flip between these three modes, stage only, um, standard, and then very small stage, and very large script window. Okay, so when you log on to MSORA, I want you to practice with these three things. However, most of the time when we are coding, we will leave it or we'll have it sitting in this standard or normal mode. Okay, so that is that. So this is our stage, this is our script window. This is how we can control the size of all three things. And now let's get to this very scary looking section on the left hand side. See all these things here? I'm going to scroll down so you can see all these things. You can see they are blocks, right? And why do we call them blocks? Because of, um, well, the basic idea of blocks that we were playing with when we were little kiddies. You remember, I think the most famous block system is a, uh, a, a toy called Lego. And Lego had the special way of fitting into each other. And that's why we call them Lego blocks. that we have but when you choose these blocks you simply grab them can you see when you put the mouse over one of the blocks it turns the point turns into a grabbing hand which allows you to grab hold of the instruction and then uh, it's on the screen but these two blocks are actually separate from each other and if we want these blocks to work together just like with lego you can have all the blocks on the table and they're just not they're, they're nothing they're just separately there um, but we can actually join blocks together and then we create a, a, a series of instructions now can you see that this block moves together this block works together okay right and of course i can and drag that out, I can also separate uh, separate, the, separate the instructions. So can you see how uh, I can, if I want, maybe I can put that block up on top now. Okay, and then I can move these blocks around. So we can move them all over the screen, put them wherever we want to, but as long as they are together like this, they become a series of instructions known as an algorithm. You have now created an algorithm, right? And it's two instructions, an instruction on its own is simply a block or an instruction. Once we combine more than one instruction together, we have created what we call an algorithm. And in this environment, the algorithm is called a program or a code. And what you are doing now, boys and girls, is you are coding. That easy. Okay, 
if you don't want to use a block anymore or if a block has been you know accidentally selected for part of your instructions you can simply get rid of it by dragging it back into the um into the window into the blocks window and let's drag that one back back in there as well okay so those are the blocks because the color will help you to remember what the blocks and those instructions are for. So all our blocks, all our in special, um, with special meaning, and each of it has a color. For example, the first one is motion. I think we all know what motion means. It's to make things move. So, and, and the motion instruction blocks are blue. And if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see it's labeled motion and it's got a blue circle reminding you that all the motion instructions are blue. So if I drag down a little bit, there's a lot more than the screen can show. And after direction, the color changes. So all these ones right at the beginning are the blue blocks, which is used for motion. Um, now, you, you know, motion you can see is, 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 is coming from the word to move. So we might want to use a lot of these instructions because if you want to um, make our little sprite here move around steps, so we can we can make him move on the screen and. And we'll probably, I am going to, uh, when we write our first few programs, I am most certainly uh, going to use motion because I'm sure you would like that. Okay, then the next one now, if I scroll, you'll find that, and how do we scroll? You simply just put your mouse pointer in the window and I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll down. Alternatively, you can um, grab the scroll bar on the left-hand side of the screen and you can use your mouse to scroll down. As you scroll, you'll see the colors to change. The order that the blocks are shown in this window is the same as the order of the colors on the code section on the left as a color code. So you can see looks goes next, which is, uh, which is, well, what color is that? Like, not purple, like mauve. And then as you go down, you get to like purple, which is sound, which is the third thing. The fourth one is events, which is, which is, like yellow, and when we scroll further down, you'll find controls, which is mustard, and then sensing, which is light blue or powder blue, operators, which comes next, and I'm scrolling so you can get an idea to see, and you, and you might be, don't get scared now because they look, oh, look at these things. In fact, be excited. Oh, look at this, it looks really so cool. Look at these guys, they are oval, and these things are, look at these hexagon looking things. So we scroll through, and then we get variables and not so much of that. And then we've got my blocks, which, 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 in fact, you can actually create your own set of instructions and save them and keep them and add them so that you don't have to recombine things uh, later on. But we, we won't do too much of using my blocks for now. Okay. Right now. Um, yeah. So that's all your instructions. Now, here's the cool thing. This little panel on the left hand side gives you a quick access to a particular set of instructions. You don't have to keep scrolling down. If you know you want to use an event, you can simply click on the event um, circle and it will directly take you there. Click directly on the operator and it will um, take you to the operators. What are operators? Don't worry, we will be talking about them. As soon as we need to use an operator, I will introduce you to it and I'll tell you what it is and then we will use it. There's lots of stuff here, right? So watch how I can just flick between everything. And of course, motion is the very first or the very new things that we would want to do. We have right here. Okay, now, um, I hope everybody's okay. Maybe we can just pause for a couple of moments to check, does anybody 
need to know anything. I'm just going to look quickly through the chat to see. Um, okay. Any questions, anybody? So far? No questions. <laughs> Corbin, are you answering for everybody? Okay, right. We all don't have to write in the chat that you don't have a question. I think you can just put your hand up and and then we will. Okay, you all good so far? Excited? Not as excited as me. Okay, now, um, a few more things um, that we want to look into. Um, costumes, you'll see at the top here, in your block programming block section, this is separate from your script area where you're gonna write code, separate from your stage is these three tabs. This is called a tab, right? So at the moment, the coding screen, and you see this little symbol there to show you the blocks, the coding blocks are now shown on the screen. So that's what we've been talking about. But there's another tab to this section of our screen and that's called costumes. And it's got a little paintbrush as its logo. So let's click there to see what we see under costumes. Okay, when you click to under costumes, you will see that the costumes is actually uh, how the sprite looks. Now, remember this sprite has been pre-created for you and it is already a part of the MSORA program, okay? There are lots of sprites that are in here and they each come with, uh, I think one or two costumes. Some of them just only have one costume, but this is uh, the costume for the sprite. Now, what is this costume? I know you might be thinking a costume is something that you wear, you know, when you go to a party or a, or a fancy dress ball or, or when you're playing a character or something, you know? Uh, not so much that kind of idea in, in this program, a costume is just referring to what the sprite looks like looks like at a particular sp spot uh, in a particular instance. So can you see our robot sprite here? This is his standard look. This is how he looks, right? If you want him to be in a different, for example, if you want to change his position, um, uh, the only way you can, look, they are some, you can make him turn and move around and, and things like that. But if you want to use programming code to move him into a different kind of appearance, then you will have to uh, put a new costume on him um, and create a new costume. Uh, for example, maybe you wanna you want to uh, uh, make him face a different way. Can you see? Um, now, now you can. Now he's looking the other way. So you can do that, and you can create it and save it as as a costume, right? So that's what you would have to do. And that's how we, remember, uh, another word I want to uh, introduce you to is a word called artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is, um, you know, an, a, an electronic device seems, seems to have the appearance of being an intelligent thing, but it's not, it's simply following instructions. When the car is moving and going forward and rolling over and doing tricks, we all say, wow, look, it's such a smart car. But in actual fact, the car is not doing anything other than following instructions that you have given. So that's why we call it an artificially intelligent. Not like the intelligence is, is, like, is like, think of it this way. It's your intelligence that you have coded into instructions that are projected into the device. So, so that's what we want to do. So if you want to, for example, make the robot look like it's moving in a different direction, we'll, we'll create another costume and simply just switch costumes and the person watching will be fooled into thinking, hey, this robot is so clever. It's now turning around. But in actual fact, it didn't even turn. We just had another costume. Now see if you want uh, another costume that's been pre-created here is this costume, which makes it look like, uh, you know, our robot is, is greeting everybody. Hello. Okay. And if we switch from this costume to this costume, we can make it appear that, that the robot is greeting you. But really, if you can see the cleverness of it, it's not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. It's, the robot's not doing anything at all. I'm simply just switching from one costume to the other, okay? So that's another clever thing that you could do. You could create all these different costumes for the robot or whatever your sprite is and save them here. And in your programming, you can give instructions to switch costumes and it would look like um, your sprite is doing things. So that what, that's what the costumes are, are for. It's a bit complicated to go into the details of 
actually fine tuning costumes. You can see here, um, for those of you who want to experiment, I'm not gonna do anything of these sorts with you right now, but you'll see that all the parts, like for example, I can take this piece out from there and move it somewhere else. And then um, the, the, the whole thing looks different. So there's lots of pieces and it takes a lot of time to fine tune this. For example, if you want to make him look like he's walking, you can create another costume where you move this hand into this, into a different direction, you see? And you can switch between those two costumes. So there's a lot of work that you'll have to do in this thing here. Um, this is like a paint platform where you can readjust all these things and there's some tools for you to do that. Right, but we're not gonna fiddle so much with costumes because costumes is, is more about appearance and we want to do more coding where we can, you know, make the robot do things rather than just, you know, change the way he looks. There's also some sounds. I'm not gonna spend too much time in here. Um, I think the default sound is a cat sound. Hello. So, so it's, it's like saying meow or whatever. What is that? It's, hello. It's saying hello, but it's uh, <laughs> the sound is called meow. So uh, yeah, so you can also, there are different sounds in the computer. You can also, um, experiment with different sounds. I might want to use a few sounds with you um, as we go along, but but not for now. I, I, as you can see, I'm just making you familiar with all the screens. I don't want this lesson to end. And then you're looking at things on your screen and you don't know what all of these things are for. So I'm just, today you can see, we, we might not, I mean, we've only got 10 minutes left. So I, I don't know how much of coding we can get to, not so much, but at least now you are familiar with all, the screen is not confusing to you when you open up the screen. Okay, um, I got people who want to say something to me. Um, okay. Right, sorry, um, where were we? Okay, so we are, um, all right, it's the screen. Is somebody speaking? Hello, sir. Hello, is this Trevor? Yes. Okay, Trevor, uh, I can hear you, you can speak. So, um, what if like you change the character and the, um, you, you give it like a food and then you use the code to control the robot with the food, will that be possible? Yes, that will be possible. Oh, um, okay. Yes, you can, you, can, you can control it or you can give it, let's not use that word. You'll be giving instructions, right? In fact, one of the things we'll be talking about uh, is that is that all? Can I can I unmute you, Trevor? Is that all you wanted to ask? Yes. Okay. Um, yes. To answer Trevor's question and just to expand upon that, um, what we will be doing is each each sprite will have its own set of instructions that you will write for it. So you can make it do anything. You can make it move anywhere, and you can get it to switch costumes. Um, by simply giving code. So we are gonna be using um, uh, different sprites and we're gonna combine them and so that they'll work together on the stage and each of them will be running different sets of instructions. So yes, to answer Trevor's question, it's, it's, it's going to be possible. Okay, uh, the last thing I wanna introduce you to quickly before we close up is the top part of the screen because sometimes you might be writing code and, um, you might not finish and you have to go. So you might need to save your, your blocks. And so I just want to quickly introduce you to those areas for that. Firstly, there's this um, globe thing, which is really just for language. So don't fiddle with that. It's set to English. And I think we're all working with English. So, um, so that's pretty good. Um, here we've got the file section. Now here, you can do, if you click on new, it means that you want to set up your, 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 your script area to begin a brand new project. Now, whenever we write instructions for our sprite or combination of sprites, all of those instructions combined together is called a project, right? Remember, we can give different sets of instructions 
to different sprites. So we might have lots of little blocks of code in the screen, right? Remember, whenever we combine these blocks, it's called code. But the entire group together can be saved together. And the entire thing when it's saved is called a project. That's the word for it, okay? So when you click on new, it means you want to start or begin working on a brand new project. We are in the space at the moment where we have a brand new project. We haven't got anything. Uh, there is absolutely no code in our script area. So, so this is a brand new project, right? Um, this is the one that we would use. And you can see my mouse pointing on the second thing. When we want to load, we've got something saved and we want to uh, bring it up from our computer. And this is the button that we'll use when we want to save our project when we're done at the end. So you click on save. Now, what does it do? When you save, it saves in the default directory. So whatever your default is, um, and I, mine is downloads because um, I've been downloading lots of material and sharing. So that's where mine will save, but you can get it to save it to my documents and it'll save there every time. We, we don't have any control of where we could save. So it'll just save in your default folder. And then, because remember you are on you are online, so it's gonna it's, it's gonna save to whatever default folder your browser is set to, which which is which is downloads for most of us. And, and then of course you must give it a name. You can see it just if you don't if you forget to give a name, it'll just call it'll just call the project new project. And if you forget the second time, it'll call it new project one. And if you forget the third time, it'll call it new project two, and it'll just keep giving the numbers like that. But then of course you can choose your own name. For example, first code, okay? And, and then you can click on the save button. Now, as programmers, we also adopt what we call naming conventions. We, we, we don't just name anything. Like if, if, okay, if the program is about a robot, we won't just call it robot um, because we might have five programs about robots and then what we're gonna call the next one. And if we call the next one robot one and then robot two, then a month from now, when we're working on our programs, we'll forget which one is robot one and which one is robot two and which one is robot three, right? So I'm gonna also teach you some naming conventions. You can see I called my first code and you can see my letter F is capital or uppercase. Uh -huh, let's use the proper terminology. And the letter C is capital. So it's called first code, um, but there's nothing to save right now. So we, 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 we won't do that until we are ready to. Um, save anything that we have as coding. Okay, now finally, before we end the lesson, and I just want to leave a few minutes for any possible questions there might be. Whenever we want to give instructions, we simply drag these instructions um, into the block and, 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 we, and we run the instructions. Now you will see also on the top of the stage and the last two things that I didn't tell you about is this green flag and this red, um, X, uh, well, what's that, an octagon. All right, that is the universal stop sign. So everybody knows what that means. And this flag means go. So this is your stop and your go controls. Go means um, you want to, uh, you want the sprite to follow instructions. Now the word we use in computer programming is a run. When we say, uh, or we use the word execute, but run is a simpler word. If you want to run your algorithm or if you want to run your code, then you click this green flag. But the code, if you go to the events, and that's, you'll see on the events, the very first event is when the flag is clicked. Now let's drag this block and just like Lego, let's connect it to this one that says move 10 steps. Now we are reading two instructions. The instruction says when the green flag is clicked, move 10 steps. When you run these instructions, because this is the only sprite that you have on screen, and you can see at the bottom right-hand side, the sprite is highlighted here. Can you see that the sprite is surrounded in a highlight? That means this instructions is for this sprite, which is this guy on the screen out there, right? When we click the flag, it should move 10 steps. So I'm gonna quickly do that so you can see at least one program running before we close the session today. Here is my flag. And did you see that? Let's do it again. Now it might sound like you seem like you're gonna ask this question, hey, you only moved one step, right? But it's actually to him, it's 10 steps because a computer, remember the screen, this stage area is made up of what we call pixels, which is a 
tiny dot or a point of light. So when you say move 10 steps to the computer, this robotic creature, the, the 10 steps is 10 dots or 10 pixels forward. So um, that is the uh, reason why he's moving 10 steps and he doesn't take 10 steps. He's moved all 10 in one quick motion and you've seen that. Okay, now, um, so, at, so, that, so that's the first block of, of programming that we've done. I'm going to stop there now because we've only got a few minutes left. And with the last three minutes, um, I don't know if there's anything you might want to ask. What I wanted you to see is that when you program, you simply drag um, blocks from the, from the code section and, and we drag them into the window. And we can you see that this block cannot be joined up with that block? It doesn't fit. So even the blocks will help you to see, just like Lego, if it fits, then it can work together. But more about that in our next class. With the last minute that I've got left, I'm not sure if anybody wants to ask anything. Okay. Okay, so um, I am, and on that note, um, I'm going to, to end our class today. Uh, I'm gonna close by firstly, just reminding you that this was brought to you by Teen, Af Teen Africa Geeks and the Department of Education. And I, I wanna thank you for sharing and being with me in the class today. I know we didn't do much and you didn't get to that exciting point where you would want to uh, start writing program code, but the introductions are done. You're familiar with the screen on your own over the uh, next couple of hours that you have before you see me again tomorrow. You can experiment with all that I showed you. Uh, you'll have to create your account first, remember that, um, and experiment with the stage and everything that you've seen. And guess what? Tomorrow, we're gonna begin the exciting uh, part of actually writing some programs. We'll, we'll actually create some script blocks tomorrow and we'll run them and we'll make the bot do some things. And uh, I think really the real good fun starts tomorrow. Remember, tell all your friends and, and share as, with as many people as you can. We don't want them to miss out uh, on this wonderful opportunity, these free classes provided for you. With that, I wanna say thank you everybody for being with us today on the channel and uh, have a good afternoon and we will see you again tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody.